Okay, we're talking about assigning overhead costs to products or services. In the old days, we would just have one company-wide rule, but as we got more sophisticated, as overhead became a bigger and bigger part of our automated process, we developed the ABC system, where we identify activities that consume resources, we assign cost to a cost pool for each activity identified, then we determine the association between the cost driver and the activity, we compute an overhead rate for each activity, and then we assign the costs to our products and or our services. Let's do an example. This is Fenway Electronics. They make three video games, the commercial, the home, and the miniature version. And traditionally, they've allocated overhead costs for their products using one company-wide allocation base of direct labor hours. So the materials and the labor don't change in this example. We're just trying to allocate the overhead the best we can. In the old days, we would just take the total of the pooled costs, which is uh, $960,000. This is before we had those pools. And we would use labor hours. So in this case, it tells us that there are 20,000 labor hours. This overhead totals up to be $960,000. So $960,000 divided by 20,000 labor hours means that our rule was simply $48 per labor hour. Since the commercial product uses 6,000 labor hours, 6,000 times 48 gave us 288,000 of overhead that got assigned to the commercial product. The home used 12,000 labor hours, 12,000 times that 48 uh, gives us 576,000 and the miniature used 2,000 labor hours. So 2,000 times that 48 gives us $96,000. We got our materials cost from the schedule. For example, the commercial units, uh, it's 25 bucks per unit times 15,000 units. We got our labor costs from that schedule. Yeah, for example, the commercial, we pay our workers 10 bucks an hour and uh, they spent 6,000 hours on it. So we add up all our materials, labor, and our overhead, and the commercial unit looks like, looks like it costs us 723,000. We divide it by the 15,000 units, and it looks like it costs us 4820. The home unit, we spend a million 347,000. That's to make 45,000 units, so our cost is about 29.93 per unit. And the miniature, uh, we spend 282,000 to make 14,000 units, so our cost is about $20.14. Total up all our costs, the commercial total, the home total, and the miniature total, and we get a total cost of $2,352,000. When we go to activity-based costing, we're going to have exactly the same total, but that overhead is going to get allocated a little bit differently between each of the three products. So in activity-based costing, we don't just have one overhead pool. We have four or five. In this instance, we have four. We have the unit pool, which is indirect labor wages, supplies, factory utilities, and machine maintenance, and we're going to allocate that pool by machine hours. We'll have a batch level pool of 194,400, that's materials handling, inventory storage, uh, labor for the setups, packaging, labeling, and shipping, and scheduling. We're going to use the number of production orders to allocate that overhead. We'll have a product level of 105,600, that's research and development. We'll just look at the time spent in R&D, and then we'll use uh, the square footage to allocate the facility level uh, costs, which are rent, general utilities, maintenance, facility, depreciation, and admin salaries. Okay, let's allocate the unit level costs and plug them into these three uh, job order cost sheets we have here. The unit costs are 360000 they get allocated on the basis of machine hours. Since the total is 360,000 and the total machine hours is 80,000, that means that our rule is $4.50. So $4.50 of overhead for every hour of machine time. Uh, the commercial unit has 10,000. 10,000 times that $4.50 is 45,000. The home uh, product has 45,000. 45,000 times that $4.50 is 
is 202,500. And the miniature product has 25,000 hours of machine time. Times that $4.50 gives us $112,500. Let's allocate the batch level, 194,400 in cost in that pool, divided by the number of production orders, and the total number of production orders is 3,000. So we get $64.80 per each production order. We look at the commercial product, and it has production orders of 200. 200 times 64.80 gives us 12,960. The home product has 2,000 production orders, so we should end up at 10 times the commercial, and sure enough, we do, 129,600. And the miniature product has 800 production orders. 800 times that 6480 gives us 51,840. The research and development costs, we're just gonna allocate on the percentage of time spent in R&D. So uh, it's a total of 105,600, and it tells us that 10% of the time was spent on the commercial product, so 10,560 goes to the commercial product. 20% of that time was spent on the home product, so 20% of that 105,600 gives us 21,120. And the bulk of the research and development time, 70%, was spent on the miniature product. So 0 0.7 times that 105,600 is a 73,920 that's allocated to the miniature product. And then finally, the facility level costs, the rent, the general utilities, the maintenance, the facility depreciation, the admin salaries. Now notice that that's a period cost because we're trying to figure out what these different products cost us. So we're no longer just looking at product costs, we're helping management run the business by looking at the overall cost of this product. And we're gonna take that rent of 300,000 allocated on the basis of square footage. Since the commercial product takes up uh, 20,000 of the 100,000, 20% of that $300,000 in cost gets allocated to commercial. The home product takes up 50% of the warehouse, so that or the factory, so that's 50% of the 300,000 that goes to the home product. And the miniature takes up uh, 30,000 square feet or 30% of the factory. So 30% of that 300,000 gets allocated to the miniature. When we total up the uh, direct materials and the direct labor, which stays the same, and the new totals for the overhead, it looks like it costs us 563,520 to make the commercial units. We divide that by the 15,000 units. And we get a per unit cost of 37.57. Same thing for home, we get a per unit cost of $28.32 and a $17.14 for the miniature. In our traditional, in our old way of costing, we got very different numbers. We thought that the commercial unit was costing us $48 to make when it really is only costing us $37. So hopefully by using activity-based costing, we get a feel for exactly what it costs us to make our stuff so we can price it more appropriately.